live from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's exclusive coverage. We are here in Bahrain in the Middle East for exclusive coverage of AWS's new region in the area. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE. It's our first time in the Middle East as we go out into the world and expand theCUBE's mission of bringing you the best content, extracting the signal from the noise, meeting new people, connecting with thought leaders, people creating innovation, creating a new cultural shift with cloud computing. It's a societal, global phenomenon. It's change that's going to impact society, culture, economics, and humans. And this is theCUBE coverage. We're going to continue with that. We are excited to have Khalid al rumayhi who's the CEO of the Bahrain Economic Development Board. He's the man and responsible with his team for all the success and vision of bringing an Amazon region into the area here in Bahrain. Amazon has announced a region that's going to come in and we expect to see economic revitalization. We expect to see an amplification of culture. Welcome to theCUBE, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, John. Thanks for inviting us and thanks for having us here uh, in the middle of all the action. Teresa Carlson from, from Amazon had a vision and you aligned with that vision. You guys are like-minded individuals. You saw something special with digital. Right. And this is not new. It's not like you woke up one morning and said, hey, let's bring Amazon in. Take us through the history of how we got here with Amazon about to launch a region early 2019 in right. Bahrain. You guys have had a vision. Take us through that. You know, I started in my position about three years ago. Uh, I remember March 2015, a little more than three years ago. And my first week on the job was joining His Highness the Crown Prince in a meeting with Teresa. And uh, so in that meeting, that's what kicked it really off. Teresa heard from His Highness, who's the chairman of the uh, Bahrain Economic Development Board, the vision for the country. Um, we deregulated our telecom sector about 13, 14 years ago. We were the first country to do that in the Middle East, which meant that we introduced competition on broadband, on mobile. It dropped prices uh, by about 50% um, on you know, connectivity in the country. That attracted Amazon. When they looked at the region, they said, here's a government that's allowing true competition, and for a data center, obviously, broadband communication yeah. and the competitiveness of that price is key. And she was also impressed with His Royal Highness's vision for the country going forward. We want to become a digital economy. We want to transform this economy from an oil-based economy to one that is based on information. And, yeah. and so, we had a common view. Yeah. And uh, we determined at that point that we were going to do everything in our power to translate the conversation we had there to a reality. Uh, and you know, here we are, uh, yeah. almost three years later, almost yeah. to have a, a region And you know, here. people know uh, my rant and rave, I always talk about data is the new oil, information is the new oil. In that data and information, digital assets are digital, is the lifeblood now of society. Citizens are reacting, everyone's now connected with mobile devices, you're starting to see autonomous vehicles, you start to see a cultural blending between the old world and then digital, and citizens can get new services, there's more efficiencies, but there's actually a better opportunity for the citizens, Absolutely. and also in general. How do you guys look at that when you guys have your meetings and you're looking at the vision of the future, the, the citizen benefits, whether it's an entrepreneur or someone who's just living life? Well, you know, we, we, when we had this discussion with Amazon, we decided to do what we call a cloud first policy and we decided that we were going to move uh, the government workloads to the cloud. We were going to actually challenge any government institution why they're not using the cloud. And it's been phenomenal. Uh, now, it's been phenomenal from a cost-saving perspective, which we want to pass on to the citizen. So, for the citizen, for, be, for them to be able to get government services on their mobile phone, to pay their electricity bill, yeah. to, to, to do, get their license, and the government, if it reduces its cost, can pass that on to that citizen. But more importantly, it's going to allow innovation to take place yeah. in the government. We're going to be able to have our education data in the Ministry of Education communicate with our labor data. We're going to be able to do education in a new way. So it is going to unleash innovation in the government and the way it offers its services. Yeah. We think it's going to do the same for businesses and yeah. for startups. We didn't get a chance to film it yesterday, but we were part of with Teresa Carlson's team, with you and your startup Bahrain, all right. the entrepreneurs from the community, very vibrant, talking. 
um, General Keith Alexander was there, um, knows a thing or two about cyber, and then we had an entrepreneur visionary in John Wood who, who's uh, been in the business, but he's also a visionary. He made a comment and you reacted to that around the impact of the AWS region coming here. He was almost like, there's a, there's a storm of innovation coming. And you align with that. You, 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 sent, you kind of reacted at dinner last night about it. What is your feeling of what this will bring to the region? Because Amazon has proven that when they put a region yeah. out, there's unexpected consequences, sometimes like things you might not see. What are you expecting for the impact for I AWS? I think it's a game changer. I mean, you said data is the new oil. If we think back to the 30s, this country was the first country to discover oil. When at that time, Texaco and SoCal started a refinery and started extracting oil, all the industries that developed around it, refineries, oil field engineering, oil field services, you know, I think we're seeing, we're going to see that in the new digital economy with data. Amazon coming here is going to do several things. Number one, it's going to unleash this uh, innovation, it's going to reduce latency for people who are storing data and looking to retrieve that. It's going to create new jobs. Data scientists, we estimate 10,000 jobs are going to come on the back of this that is going to be for the entire region. And again, I emphasize this is going to be a game changer not just for the Kingdom of Bahrain, but for the entire Middle East. Um, we're already seeing startups who are getting educated about what yeah. the cloud can do for them and the scale up the scale that they can reach by going to the cloud early on. Yeah. We've seen that in the United States. Yeah. Why can't this region see a unicorn yeah. that is able to be a global leader uh, just by virtue of you know, going to the cloud and learning from um, Amazon? And Amazon, AWS shares our passion for the startup yeah. community and what this can do for that. I want to get to the, what's going to attract businesses to come into Bahrain, but first I'll talk about the startup impact. Amazon has proven, and I heard a comment from one of the startups, Amazon Web Services for big companies. Whoa, whoa, yeah, big companies are using Amazon now, but they won, they were built on the backs of startups when Amazon first started, and startups still use Amazon. It is a dream for a startup, the right. cost to get a company up off the ground, the speed of innovation with Amazon has proven startups. This is a big opportunity, and so this is going to impact how you set policy and get out of the way of entrepreneurs, do you help them? As you look at policy, it's like almost a, a tough decision on your part, because you guys are used to helping entrepreneurs, very entrepreneur friendly, but almost, do you get out of their way? Do you help them? What's the strategy for the startups? How do you look at this? Because if the acceleration comes in, and the training kicks in, you're going to see a renaissance of entrepreneurship. Right. What do you do? Get out of the way? You help them out? What's the You got to balance it. I think you can't coddle them. You can't do everything for the entrepreneur. There's got to be that grit, the resilience, that hunger at the entrepreneur. I was an entrepreneur before I took this, this role, and I think you've really got to have that fire in your belly. So what we want to do is we want to create an ecosystem, but we don't want to spoon feed them. So what we've done is, for instance, we launched a $100 million venture capital fund of funds. And we said the government shouldn't invest in startups, but let's create a fund of funds that will invite venture capitalists to base themselves here but we're not going to tell these venture capitalists how to invest. Yeah. So each startup has to pitch itself to these venture capitalists and yeah. make sure that there's justification for it. We're going to create you know, training, we're going to create elements, the regula regulation, we introduced a bankruptcy law this year that is going to allow people to fail and to restructure. So we're going to put the policy in place, we're going to allow capital to be there, we're going to look at our training and education. But again, it really is down to the entrepreneur um, to, you know, so you've got to mix, you've got to balance it. Yeah. You've got to say the burden is also on you yeah. to think about what's the market opportunity. Um, here is what the country will do, but then the rest is up to you. And I think you know, we're going to see our, our young youth in the region. You know, we're doing this because this region is transforming. Um, this region needs to create jobs. There's about 100 million jobs you need to create in the Middle East over the next couple of years. Yeah. You're not going to be able to create that in the normal way. So we want in people to become employers, to become yeah. entrepreneurs, rather than just employees and looking for yeah. a nine to five job. So it's integral to the vision of the, you know, the region. Entrepreneurship is the engine of innovation. All right, let's talk about um, the region. Um, you know, we're first out here, so I'm kind of new, fresh eyes, and you see Dubai out there, you got uh, Asia, you got China and all these, uh, and Hong Kong on Singapore. So 
you guys have a unique opportunity. Dubai's kind of like a New York. It's hustle, bustle, it's built out. You guys but have this feeling like a Silicon Valley vibe. Right. It feels very open, very friendly. So you don't, they don't have to compete with each other. New York does things, Silicon Valley does things. So you have this entrepreneurial culture. The key is a global co-creation, a connection. How are you going to attract businesses? Because there is demand in the U.S. for domiciling in places outside the United States, and there's been a lot of competition. Sure. So are you prepared for companies to come here, work with you? I know you guys are doing a lot of work. What do you say to the folks out there saying, hmm, I need to have a presence. Can I domicile in Bahrain? What's it like? What's the opportunities for me to connect into a growing ecosystem around sure. Bahrain? So I'd, I'd say, first of all, on the region, um, I mean, just like in Asia, just like in the US, you can have multiple hubs. So, you know, Bahrain will be a hub alongside a Dubai or a Riyadh or a Kuwait and so forth, or in Abu Dhabi. And our niche is, as a small country, we're going to be very agile. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why Amazon chose Bahrain is because we have a team Bahrain approach. And I, you know, I came from the private sector. When you're talking to General Electric, you're not talking to one department in General Electric, especially if you're a large customer. The whole company's going to rally around you and bring a solution to you as a customer. And we're going to do that as a country. So with Amazon, we got all the various ministries and we took a Team Bahrain approach and we said, we're going to solve, through the Economic Development Board, we're going to solve for your problem. Mondelez, which um, chose to locate their $100 million facility in Bahrain, uh, built a facility about 30 soccer pitches. And, and they did it within a year and a half. We reclaimed land and had the land ready for them. They called it, because they make Oreos, they called it turning ocean to Oreos. Yeah. And so it's that agility uh, that is going to differentiate us. In terms of niche, we're very interested in FinTech. We think we're going to take a leadership position, not only regionally, but globally in FinTech. We have exciting announcements that we're going to make in FinTech. As a small country, we can be nimble, agile, yeah. startup friendly, uh, and, and, and kind of innovate. And so we're determined to carve a niche in open banking, in, in um, cryptocurrency exchanges, interesting innovation areas that we think we can excel at. Cloud computing certainly is a driver. Artificial intelligence, obviously clearly um, the, the fodder for entrepreneurship because it allows you to do things with data at right. a scale with the cloud engine. Talk about FinTech and banking, you can't ignore blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency, which is bubblish right now, and it was kind of cleaning itself out, sorting itself out, but when that starts to settle, and it becomes legitimate in the sense of a global access to digital money, or software-defined money, right. and data, that could be an integral part. How do you guys look at that? I know that's something that everyone's talking about. Um, people are looking to do token kind of business models, and there really hasn't been any leadership globally at, at all on, right. you know, there's some places people can domicile, we hear Malta here, there, and there. So how do you guys look at that market? Are you thinking about it? Are you kicking the tires? What's happening? We're looking at FinTech and saying, really, beyond all the logos and, and all the, we're looking to reduce the friction for a customer doing the simple things. You know, looking at aggregating your accounts, understanding how you're spending money, um, looking at how to transfer money, looking at how to raise capital. If we can look at reducing the friction for people around these challenges, these day-to-day -day yeah. challenges, and use our country as a pilot for doing that, then imagine the potential that once you illustrate the potential here, you could yeah. go replicate it elsewhere. So we're very interested in blockchain. So you talk about cryptocurrencies. I think the real interesting element is the blockchain opportunity in FinTech and beyond. How can you allow the distributed ledger to have multiple applications? We're going to int introduce issuing car licensing yeah. via blockchain. Land, real estate transactions via blockchain. Um, in addition to that, we're looking at open banking and allowing open banking to be uh, prevalent here and allowing entrepreneurs to plug in and get access to that data and innovate around that. So that's how we're thinking about innovation yeah. in, in FinTech. Really, thanks for coming on and spending the time. I know you're super busy and thanks for hosting us with theCUBE as part of the Amazon contingent. I'll give you the final word. For the folks watching out there, what should they know about Bahrain that they might not know about it? And how do they engage with you guys? What are you guys doing? How should someone contact you? How do you engage? And what's the secret sauce of the Bahrain plan? Well, first of all, I, I'm going to plug my institution. 
simple. Look at BahrainEDB.com. It's on the internet. It's going to give you everything you need about what Bahrain, and what I'd say is this is a small, but you know, in, this, in today's world, a global world, an interconnected world, small is beautiful. So we're a small, forward-thinking country. Yeah. Um, we're in a region that is about $1.5 trillion in terms of just the Gulf Cooperation Council, and here is a great gateway for tapping yeah. into that opportunity. We're about 30 minutes from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which is doing wonderful things with Vision 2030, and you can be in Bahrain accessing that opportunity. And so I'd invite you to come, look at our website, yeah. and the Bahrain EDB will help you uh, translate that kind of yeah. opportunity to a reality. Khalid, Chief Executive Officer of the Economic Development Board in Bahrain, bold move, congratulations. Um, bold moves have bold payoffs. Thanks, Good bet thanks with thanks Amazon. Me, John. Thanks, thanks for you. coming up. This is theCUBE here, we're live in Bahrain here at the, at the Ritz Carlton for AWS Summit 2018 here in the Middle East. I'm John Furrier, we'll be back with more coverage after this short break. Thank you.